folks, I'm Lucy at Ballyhoo Creations and this is the third video in the beginner series for machine embroidery. We've already talked about supplies and how to get your fabric properly hooped and now we're going to stitch something. But first, I need you to do something extremely dull and boring. I need you to read the manual that came with your machine. I know, it's not fun, but I can't teach you how every machine works. That's what the manual is for. If you really want to ignore that manual, at least go and watch some YouTube videos about how to thread your machine, how to insert the bobbin, how to start and stop the machine, and how to pull up a design to stitch. Somebody has probably already made a video for your particular machine on those topics. You'll need to know how to do those things for your machine because this video will assume you've already figured those things out. I'll cover some pitfalls on those things, but you still got to do some work here, okay? Now that you've got your supplies and you've learned how to hoop some fabric, let's make this simple and hoop your white non-stretchy cotton with a cutaway stabilizer in either a 4x4 or maybe even a 5x7 hoop depending on what came with your machine. You don't want to start with the biggest hoop because those have challenges that smaller hoops don't have. So once you've got the fabric hooped, just put it aside. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Now let's double check a few gotchas on the thread path. The thread path is exactly what it sounds like. It's the path that the thread takes through the machine. And it matters for the thread on the top and in the bobbin. If you thread the machine wrong, you're going to have a lot of mistakes. And that's one of the first problems that beginners have. So it's important to cover some basics. Let's start at the bobbin. It needs to be in there correctly top or bottom, clockwise or counterclockwise. These things matter, but they're different between different sewing machine brands. That's why I said at the beginning you need to read your manual or watch videos for your machine. I'm not even going to show you the direction of my bobbin because yours might be different and I don't want to confuse you. Yours might be opposite, but I'm going to put my bobbin in and make sure the thread gets caught in the tension disc just the way that the manual tells you and make sure that you leave at least you know about an inch or so of thread extra so that the machine can catch that and start forming stitches. Now let's put the hoop on our machine. It just goes underneath the presser foot here and you might need to raise your presser foot up a little bit. And then different mechanisms, different latches work here. On mine I just push a button and slide it in. Yours may have a different kind of latch over here. And make sure that the fabric at the bottom is touching the bed of the machine. Like we talked about in the hooping video, you don't want the fabric riding on top of the hoop here. It needs to be down at the bottom and touching the machine. For the upper thread, it starts at the spool. Your spool goes on the spool pin and there may be a spool cap that goes on top of that to keep the spool in place. Spool pins can usually go vertical so that the thread is standing up or they can go horizontal so the thread is lying sideways. Your spool pin can go on whether your thread is vertical or if it's horizontal sideways. That keeps the, the spool in place. The felt pad isn't really needed when your spool is sideways like this, but when your thread is vertical, you definitely need that felt pad under there to make sure that the spool can glide easily. And then the cap will keep the thread from bouncing around. You don't want it too tight so that the thread can still move but you don't want the thread to pop off. If you're using a separate thread stand like I have back there behind my machine, you still have to thread everything all the way through the machine. Pretend like that thread stand is just your spool of thread and then everything else still has to come afterwards. Some people try to use the thread stand and go straight to the needle and that doesn't work. Machines have a little button like this one, maybe on a different place on your machine, but this is for winding the bobbin thread. It has nothing to do with the top thread and sometimes people will think that it needs to go through there somehow and try to wrap it around. This is going to mess up your embroidery big time. So make sure that it does not go through that little springy tension button. That's only for winding bobbins. When does your thread need to stand upright and when can it lay down sideways? I'll show you that secret. This is called a cross wound spool. You see how the threads are on there diagonally this way and then some of them go horizontal and then diagonal. This is called cross wound and these spools are meant to go on sideways like this and you have to make sure that you put that spool cap on 
so that it won't fall off. And these threads are intended to go this way. They unspool off of the top in a nice easy manner. That's the cross wound spool that goes sideways. The other type of spool is called a stacked spool and you see how there's no diagonals in here. This is just wound um, straight across straight lines here. Just like if you were winding a bobbin it would be a stack wound like this. And these spools need to actually go vertically and you need to have that felt pad underneath and you can put the spool cap on top to keep it from bouncing up and down but you don't want it too tight on there. And these threads or these spools make the spool spin as it pulls the thread off and that way it comes off nice and even. So that's the difference between a vertical and a sideways. Cross wound needs to go sideways and the stacked spool needs to go vertical up and down. When the thread comes off the spool, it first needs to go into some kind of thread guide. Yours may look different. And then it goes up and around through the tension discs. Again, your machine may look different, but there will always be from the spool to a thread guide through the tension somewhere. This is super important. Guess what opens those tension discs and keeps them open or closed? It's actually your presser foot down here. And mine has a button that I can put the foot down or raise it up again. And when that foot is down, the tension discs close and clamp the thread together. When the foot is up, the discs open up and let the thread in. So while you're threading your machine through the tension discs up here, you need to make sure that the presser foot is raised up. If the presser foot's down, the thread will not go into your tension disc properly and you'll have a whole mess when you try to embroider. Embroid so make sure your foot is up and then you can thread the machine through the tension. After the tension discs, your thread needs to go through the take-up lever which is something like this. And it does need to go in a, partic a particular order, like down, up, down, or something like that. It seems weird, but it really does need to go several times. Like mine shows it goes down, then up, then down again. And it needs to hook in. Some machines actually have something that has to be threaded up here. You may have to thread it through there. Mine just has a hook, so I just catch it on. But you do have to do that down, up, down, through the take-up lever. Don't let that throw you. Once we get down to the needle, there's always going to be some little thread guide on that needle bar, right above the needle, that the thread needs to go into. And now it's okay to go ahead and put the foot down because I've already got the tension discs done. And I'm going to thread my needle. You may have an automatic needle threader on your machine. Those are a wonderful thing to have. I don't, so I actually have to do this by hand. And my camera's in the way, so this is gonna be quite fun. It can help to use tweezers to get the thread through the needle. I just wanted to show how the thread goes in front of the needle and it's threaded from the front towards the back and make sure it doesn't wrap around the needle. Now it's time to choose a design, and like I said in the first video about supplies, to start out with, you want your first stitch out to be a design that came pre-loaded on the machine. Those are proven to work on your machine are the safest ones to start with. You'll have plenty of time to stitch out all the gorgeous designs on the internet later on. Take the time to practice on stuff that you don't really have any intention of keeping. So if it's not perfect, you won't mind throwing it away. Choose any design in your machine's library that will fit in the 4x4 or whatever size hoop that you've gotten prepared. Don't worry about changing any settings yet, we're just going to stitch a simple design. Okay, our bobbin is loaded, our hooped fabric is on the machine, our design is also loaded and ready to go, and the top thread is threaded properly through the machine. We're almost ready to start. Now what I want to do is I'm going to hold my upper thread, I'm going to hold the hand wheel and turn it towards me, and see how the needle down here is going into the fabric? When it comes back up again, and I'm going to raise the presser foot, use some kind of blunt object, some people do use their scissors for this, and just sweep the threads, and that's going to pull the bobbin thread up. And it's very short, so I need tweezers to get it pulled out, and it's white, so you're having a hard time seeing that. But there's a white bobbin thread under there. So now my bobbin thread is up on the top. You can see it here, coming up the top of the fabric. 
and the needle is threaded and it's also going under my presser foot. You see how that thread is underneath? That's going to eliminate problems when I begin to stitch. If your machine trims all the threads for you, this won't be as important, but for the entry level or older machines, you should start your embroidery this way with the threads on top of the fabric. That will avoid problems when you start stitching. Finally, we're ready to press that start button. If you're feeling anxious about this, keep your finger close to the start and stop button so you can stop the machine at any time if something goes wrong. This isn't some artificial intelligent robot that's going to destroy the world. It's just an embroidery machine and it'll stop when you press the stop button. So don't be scared. Okay, here it goes. Now my machine beeps at me to tell me that I need to cut the threads because I don't have an automatic thread cutter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the threads off right next to the fabric with my little curved embroidery to scissors that we talked about in the supplies. And I'm going to press start again and it will continue. As the design stitches, keep an eye on it. If you turn your back, the machine goblins will creep in and mess things up, or at least that's what any experienced sewist will tell you. Don't put your hands anywhere near the needle while it's stitching, not even if you see others on YouTube doing that. Don't risk that trip to the emergency room. I've seen too many people get a needle through the finger, maybe even into the bone. Just don't do it. Keep your hands out of the hoop. Stop the machine first if you need to get in there and reach something. Get in the habit of scanning areas of the machine to make sure things are working. Watch the thread to make sure it's coming off the spool correctly. Sometimes it gets wrapped around the spool pin or stuck on the spool. And then watch the needle area to make sure all is well under there. My first color is finished. The machine made a little beeping sound. It's telling me over here the, the first color is finished. So I'm going to say OK. And now it's time to change my thread. So I have a two color design. It's a little tulip here that has green and then some red. I'm going to use pink instead. It's up to you. Use whatever color you want. But I'm just going to re-thread my machine real quick for the second color. And this time I'm using one of those cross wound spools, so it needs to go sideways. When you pull your thread out of your machine, you always want to cut it at the thread like I just did, and then cut down here at your design, right there at the surface, grab it in front of the needle. I'm going to try to do it where you can see. I'm going to grab that thread in front of the needle and pull. That way you won't do any damage to your tension disc pulling the thread out backwards. Just pull it all out. Yes, I realize this is a lot of wasted thread. Um, machine embroidery does waste a lot of those thread tails. That's just part of the deal. Sorry. Okay, this one needs to go on sideways. And I'm going to need that spool cap for sure. Just turn that hand wheel about one time. Lift that presser foot. And now I'm going to get my bobbin threads up to the top. There it is, and I accidentally pulled out another piece of thread, which I'm going to cut off at the surface. Okay, we're good to go. So now I'm just going to press start, and it will do up. Oh, see that? I wasn't holding on to my thread, and so my thread came out of the needle. And guess what? I don't know if it's properly threaded up in here anymore. So what I have to do is start over and thread the machine again. I know it's not fun, but this is machine embroidery and we all have to do these um, more often than you would think. And then continue. Check that your hoop isn't hitting anything. And I should have mentioned this earlier, but make sure your machine has plenty of room around it so the hoop doesn't hit anything while it's running. We've all messed that up too. When that hoop hits something, the stitches get out of whack and mess up the design but try to watch out for that. So let's take a look at our design. And this is the front of the design. We want to make sure that our stitches are nice, smooth, and even. These look very nice, nice, even edges. This looks really good. Once you get a successful stitch out, try other designs on your machine. Try moving a design around to a new place in the hoop, or try making it larger or smaller. Play with the alphabets on your machine. Just play. Get comfortable with it. Have some fun. Try bigger hoops if your machine has them. Play with designs from the internet or special projects. Try out new threads or stabilizers. There's so many things you can do with your embroidery machine. 
There are more videos in this beginner series that will show you how to move beyond the basics and into some advanced territory with new stabilizers, new threads, new fabrics. So look for those videos to take your machine embroidery skills further.